first it was just a feeling, a deep and aching desire to live and breathe the wilderness. Then we had to figure out how to get there. My wife Amy and I had a dream to go to Labrador and document a remote brook trout fishery on film for the first time. The problem was, we'd never done anything like that before and lacked the skills, gear, and experience to pull it off. We were heading into an unforgiving wilderness that didn't care who we were or where we'd come from, one that demands a healthy level of fear and respect. Though we had plenty of combined backcountry experience, we'd never paddled a canoe before, and we needed to find a place to cut our teeth before embarking into the subarctic. Longtime advocates of learning by doing, we embarked down a path that would change our lives forever. There are a handful of river systems in the lower 48 that are heralded by paddlers the world over, but perhaps none is more renowned than the crown jewel of Maine's north woods, the Allagash Wilderness Waterway. For years we've been hearing about this legendary 100 mile stretch of remote lakes, streams, and rapids, and it seemed that everyone we spoke to had either done it or was planning to. The majority of the Pine Tree State's upper two-thirds is owned by private timber companies, but in a rare partnership with the people of Maine and the public at large, they've ensured protection and access to some of the wildest remaining swaths of land in the eastern United States. We started on Johnson Pond after a nearly seven-hour shuttle ride down several hundred miles of worn-out logging roads. We'd make our way from there to Allagash Lake before running Allagash Stream onto Chamberlain Lake, where we'd begin several days of open water travel. As if on cue, we were greeted by cold rain and biting wind forcing us to spend an extra two days on the lake before moving on. Knowing that the only way out was through, the seriousness of remote canoe tripping began to dawn on us. Depending on the skill and determination of the paddlers, completing the length of the waterway can take anywhere from five days to two weeks, and with no direct access to the outside world, we'd be responsible for carrying everything we needed to survive comfortably within our canoe. The wilderness can be a great teacher if you're receptive to its lessons. The Allagash showed us early on that nature always manages to find a balance. In order to experience the good and beautiful, we often have to push through the difficult. After nearly three days of miserable conditions, the skies parted and we were treated to one of the most beautiful afternoons we'd ever seen. Several days behind schedule, we knew we couldn't linger.
once a super highway for running logs in and out of the main woods, the Allagash is now a fully protected wilderness corridor, the first in the country to be designated a wild and scenic river managed by the state. Though the land remains primitive, sparse and remote ranger stations dot the length of the waterway ensuring some semblance of security in the event of an emergency, and there are plentiful simple, yet effective designated campsites throughout. It was the perfect gateway, giving us margins for mistakes while simultaneously testing us beyond anything we'd done before. Traveling the large, open water lakes on the waterway can be treacherous, and the region's prevailing north wind made for long, challenging days. We rested when possible, but we knew we couldn't afford to lose too many more days or our rations would run out. With every paddle stroke we felt our arms growing stronger and our technique improving. With every new obstacle overcome, our confidence grew with the knowledge that we'd continue to propel ourselves forward, every day one step closer to our goal. After nearly a week of long travel, we finally made it to the Allagash River itself where we'd spend the remainder of our journey with the current on our side.
We've spent most of our lives on or around rivers, but this was the first time we'd experienced one in this way, start to finish. By driving, flying, walking, or biking from one location to another within a river system, it's hard to gain a perspective on the whole. Rivers and watersheds are living, breathing organisms of which an incalculable number of life forms depend. Like the vascular system of the earth itself, they transport vital nutrients to plants and animals throughout their vast lengths. Modern technology and convenience have insulated human beings from our once natural rhythms, ones that have proven to be essential to living happy and purposeful lives. But not here, not on the river. When the sun set, we'd sleep. When the wind blew too hard, we'd rest. And when the skies opened up, we'd hunker down and huddle around the fire. There's an efficiency of movement and intention achieved when paddling a river that's hard to find elsewhere in life. And though hard to articulate, there's often many quiet lessons learned during a day on the water. There's a fine balance that needs to be struck to achieve success, both between the canoe and the river, but also between you and your paddling partner. The Allagash turned out to be more wild and challenging than we could have predicted, but perhaps therein lay its greatest lesson, that each of us is capable of so much more than we realize. We'd paddled 50 miles of open water and headwinds, portished hundreds of pounds of gear farther than we knew we could, and ran rapids despite the overwhelming fear that inexperience had instilled within us. In the end, it took us 10 days to complete the paddle from Johnson Pond to Allagash Village, but the knowledge and experience we gained could fill a lifetime. As one chapter ends, another begins, and our sights were now firmly on Labrador. Over a thousand miles lay between us and the mysterious world above the 53rd parallel, but what had once seemed like a distant fantasy was now entirely within reach. In two months' time, we'd be paddling the wild ribbons of blue water that crisscrossed the big land. And while we couldn't predict what challenges we'd face, we took comfort in knowing that whatever they were, we were ready. I'm not, 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 I'm not,